Winning cures everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. This is Winning Cures Everything. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. This is the NFL reaction and recap to week number two. And boy, was there a lot to discuss. Good gracious. Chris, you doing all right today? Yes, sir. Wonderful, wonderful. The show brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They've got six wonderful sports books. You're going to like all of them. I guarantee it. They're all a good time. You can go put your bets down there. Go to tunicatravel.com to get more information on all six of them, along with all the other stuff that's going on down there. they got great concerts, great events, festivals, golf courses, etc. A lot of wonderful stuff happening down there. We're a fan of all of it. Uh, go check it out, tunicatravel.com. Chris, let's jump into this thing. We don't want to take uh, too much of anybody's time today. But, man, there was some major league news that happened over this weekend that uh, is going to change, I would assume, ratings. I would assume projections for the rest of the year. Uh, two playoff teams probably done. Let's let's jump in. I mean, tell me tell me what's well, up with, uh, with number one. So, for starting at 11, here we go. We have to start the week with the two biggest losses of the week. Uh, surefire Hall of Famer Drew Brees out for an extended period of time, six, eight weeks, nobody really knows. And uh, and then Ben Roethlisberger, um, he's he's out for the season. And uh, both of these just massively changed these franchises. Um, you know, the Steelers just report today they're bringing in Paxton Lynch for a look, uh, surely just to be a backup. Uh, Mason Rudolph didn't look terrible, no. but, but he's also not – I don't think he's dynamic. I don't think he's the future – Teddy Bridgewater obviously hadn't worked with the ones in a long time. Um, Looked like he has a lot of growing to do. If there's one of them that I think uh, could at least carry the franchise the best they can, I think it is Bridgewater. I think it is the Saints. A, I think they have a lot more talent on that team from top to bottom, defensively, offensively, skill players, everything around. I can agree um, with Teddy. that. Teddy, and I trust Sean Payton more than I trust any coach on the Steelers right now to say, all right, I got to get this kid ready. And I think in a week or two, he could be a legitimate starting quarterback in the NFL. Um, will he be a star? Don't know that. Um, you know, will he greatly improve? Not really sure. But can he be a sustainable quarterback for a little while? Maybe. Um, so I think that's the biggest news. That's where you have to start, number one. Yeah, I think I agree with you. Um Tell me this. So the Steelers announced that they traded their first round pick for this coming season for Minka Fitzpatrick. I think it's a terrible deal. Ben Roethlisberger is 37 years old. Even if he does come back from this next year, he's still he's going to be 38 next season with injury problems, coming off yes. an elbow surgery on his throwing arm. Uh, so you know we we just don't know what's going to happen there. Why? The why end, you wouldn't go on and move to who you I, think could be uh, your future franchise player, especially after losing AB, after losing Le'Veon Bell? You start but, the season off zero and two. Yeah, they're projected to be a bottom eight pick, I guess, or a top eight pick, however you say it. And uh, and and I just can't. I can't see. I don't know. I, I cannot see Minka Fitzpatrick, a safety. A sa you know how I feel about secondary guys in draft and all stuff. Well, he, he wasn't cannot, worth the top eight pick in, in last, year's, last draft, year's draft. And last year's draft is supposedly nowhere near as loaded as this year's draft, especially at the quarterback position where you're looking to move forward and go on. Yeah. Now, to be fair, I think Fitzpatrick will fit well in this defense. But who but cares? But the value isn't yeah. equal. So I mean, I, if you could make a deal for a second or a third, then we're having a different conversation. But you're giving up a top uh, ten pick. Yeah, a top ten pick for Minka Fitzpatrick, which normally I'd be ecstatic about a situation like this because Alabama player going to the Steelers, obviously that's that's built in in heaven for me as a as a fan of both programs. But this just made no I, sense. I'm gonna, from the I'm outside. gonna tell you, man. I don't know. I don't like the philosophy or the the excuse that I'm not being played right for players, especially on the defensive side of the ball, to say I'm not I'm the reason I'm not any good is because I'm not being they're not playing me right. 
Like, well, that, that just that doesn't make any sense. Like, that works for a quarterback. No, but, it. But that's I, look, about I, the only system on the team where if you can shut folks down, if you can make tackles in the open field, if you can get to the ball carrier when they're running the football, it, it shouldn't matter where they line you up. You either got a nose for a football or you don't. You can either play in the league or you can't. It's it. I, I'm looking at it from a different perspective. Okay. I know what if, you're looking at it from. If Lamar Jackson was lined up at wide receiver for you know the Ravens or whoever else, but he knew that he was a better quarterback than he was a wide receiver, it like it makes sense. He was playing no. out of position. No, he did doesn't. significantly no. better last year when he was playing the correct position. Well, so I, I, that's fine. And, and we can we can argue and disagree about it, but I I see where he's coming from on it. The the right. difference is is every Alabama player that ever gets drafted, Gary, you think is going to be a Pro Bowler and a Hall of Famer, and every oh, LSU player that. that I think gets drafted, I I see them for who they were and what they are, and and I just don't think Mika Fitzpatrick is going to be great. And if and the Steelers just gave up a top ten pick for him, and I think this oh, is I just told you it doesn't make any sense to me. Of, I think that this, he will fit franchise. their defense, but. I, I don't expect him to be a pro bowler. I don't expect, you know, I think he could I, be I don't a expect him to make that defense any better at all. So okay. I think they've got a lot of holes. They've got a lot of problems, and, and, and that's, that's a bad move. This is a quarterback show. I will tell you, this entire episode is going to be nothing but quarterbacks. We're going to move to number two, Thursday night football. This was an awful, awful display of, of quarterbacks. And, and we can't we can't blame this being on Thursday either. This is week two, all right? Yeah. If, if you're so beat up by week one and you've only got a short week to prepare for Thursday night and you play this badly, the, the rest of the season is going to go terrible. Cam finish. <clears throat> Cam Newton, in my opinion, is finished. I, I think he's done. Jameis, yeah, I, I think I agree. Jameis is lucky he was playing Cam. That's it. That's it. I think this Tampa Bay team is going to struggle and struggle badly. They are going to have to play some bad teams with bad quarterbacks. Both of these guys, um, they they just looked awful the entire night. Yeah. They Would you trust did. either of these guys at all? This this was complete incompetence. No, I don't trust either one of them uh, it, as far as I could throw them. Yeah. And the issue is that Cam, injury problems – uh, he's he's in his head now. He's taken too many hits. There's there's just major problems with him. And the issue for the Panthers is that offense, that team was built around him. And without the, the head, the rest of the body just falls apart, right? Yeah. So I don't know what they're going to be able – like you can't just bring in a regular pro-style quarterback – and be successful with the pieces that they have around them, right? Well, Christian the, McCaffrey. The other quarterback on the on the roster is Will Greer. Yeah. I, I don't I don't know that Will Greer A is ready and B. But, I mean, he's still he, injured, right? Yeah, even if he was ready, I don't know how good he's going to be. I have no idea what the Panthers are going to do, and this really sucks. I had a lot of stock in the Panthers this year. Yes, you did. Yes, oh, you did. I've got uh, so it, many investments. As far as the Bucks go, uh, Jameis. We don't trust him, but no. that defense looks and and it's not just against the Panthers. They also looked pretty good against the 49ers, who came out last week and just absolutely destroyed the Bengals. Um, I think that Bucks defense is pretty good, and and I think you kind of saw why they were willing to let McCoy walk. After last season, right? Well, no, Njoku is better than I'm not Njoku. Um, um, Indomitian Sue is better than McCoy. That, oh, yeah. just, they traded they traded McCoy for Indomitian Sue at, at the exact same position, and and Sue's just a better player. He, yeah, he's just a better player. They won that. I do right. agree. Moving on. Speaking of quarterbacks who are finished, I would like to introduce you to Joe Flacco. I, I refer to him as Joey Flacid. He is terrible. He is – you're talking about done. If Thursday yeah, night he's, football he's set so. the game back a decade, Sunday afternoon football between the Bears and the Broncos set it back at least nine and a half years. I mean, oh, it is – Yeah. It, Trubisky, you have, man. You, ha, you have a has-been in Flacco and in Mitchell, a guy who's a long way from being a never-was. Okay? Yeah. I, I have no idea – 
why the quarterback position is so bad right now in the NFL. In, in both of these guys, Joe had one amazing postseason where he just played lights out, won a Super Bowl. Congratulations. Every other year of his entire existence in the NFL has been the level of mediocrity. And now I, he would he would kill three random people to be mediocre. <laughs> he's, he's just terrible. He's done. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think I think you're right. Uh and and we thought okay, maybe because it, last year obviously was not super accurate. His deep ball is just gone. Gone. Um, Finished. Th- we we thought maybe a new location, a new environment, uh leaning yeah, but the issue is the Broncos are what the Ravens were. It was a team that was fronted by their defense that leaned heavily on their defense, and you just needed the quarterback to make a few plays here and there. And I don't think he can do it anymore. He couldn't do it with the Ravens. And now I he, thought I thought getting up in the thin air would help his would help his deep ball and would help his passing. And and no, it has not. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. He just he's done. He couldn't hit anything. I mean, I, between these two games, the Thursday night game and the Bears-Broncos game, I, more balls hit the ground than I've ever seen in professional football in my life. Uh, you, and you're talking about the, the injuries were getting open. Yeah, you're, you're going to see more. Yeah, I mean, it was, <laughs> it, was, it, was, it, was, it was tough to watch. All right. Yes, it was. So we'll move on to number four. While we're traf- trashing quarterbacks here, uh, let, let, let's talk about Sunday night football, Okay. Carson Wentz. Very entertaining. Very Matt entertaining Ryan. game. We were supposed to get a game where we got two good quarterbacks, okay? Two yeah. guys that one has been an MVP. The other one was almost an MVP, got hurt. They did everything they could to give the game to the other person. Matt Ryan, three interceptions, while Carson Wentz, only two interceptions. But he missed more wide open guys than I've ever seen in my life from a guy who was on pace to at one point in time be an MVP. Hey, I- I'll tell you this. All of these guys uh, that that are making all of this money right now, as bad as they are playing, it makes Dak Prescott worth fifty million dollars a year. We, <laughs> we, yeah, the way we'll, that he's been, we'll, we'll, we'll get to Dak, but you're exactly no, but you're exactly right though. Oof. If if I'm Dak, I love every second of this. Yes. Now, now I know a lot of people are going to make an excuse for Car- excuse for Carson. Oh, we didn't have his best wide receivers. Look, I understand those guys weren't on the field. I watched that game. The receivers that were on the field were getting open. They were two, three yeah. yard separations from the other guy, and he wasn't close. He he skipped more balls in and sailed more balls than I've ever seen. The best quarterback on that field last night or, or, or Sunday night, we're doing this Tuesday now, is Josh McCown. Josh McCown comes in the game because Carson gets takes a shot. All right. He's right. in the medical tent. He leads them down to the 12-yard line. He's on their way to score the best drive of the game so far on both sides of the ball. And what do they do? Oh, Carson's ready again. Let's put him back in there. Carson, three incompletions, sell him for a field goal. Yep. No, yep. you see McCown has the offense. McCown is making something happen with and the missions that are on the, the street, field. street, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, this is this is one of those we're paying him a lot of money. We can't bench him. No, but you have an excuse with him being in concussion protocol to say, let's let McCown finish this drive. Let's see if we yes. can get one in the end zone because 100%. the other bloke can't. Yeah, it it was it was very ridiculous to watch. I, I will say that it was. It, it, I, and now, to be fair, fantasy points wise, both of these guys put up massive numbers. Oh, they and got a, a ton of yards. They got yeah, a lot of yards. A lot of yards. A lot of yards. And it, a lot of it was at the end of the game, right? Well, it, Matt Ryan Matt Ryan hit two monster passes to Julio. One was a little dink pass that Julio took to the house. The other one was a great throw and, and a big pass to Julio in the end zone. Um, yeah, so they put up speaking, big fantasy numbers. But speaking nobody, of the one – We're not talking fantasy here, man. No, no, no. I know. I know. And speaking of the Julio Jones all. thing – so Julio got his three-year, sixty-six million dollar contract, and is worth way more than that. <laughs> that dude is a playmaker. He, he oh, just, I don't know, man. Twenty. He's worth what he's getting paid. Twenty-something million for a year for a receiver is pretty good. Oh, I, I, I'm with you. I agree. I agree. But I'm especially telling you, with his age and his injury prone. He, right uh, now, he's he's healthy and he's a monster. And he is but fast, good, crazy. gracious. 
They they yeah. need about eleven of those guys on the field. Yeah. All right. So last quarterback I'm going to dump on today. All right. Kirk Cousins is just good enough to give you hope, but when the game's on the line, he will throw the most soul crushing interceptions I've ever seen in my life. He, he can't beat teams with winning records. He and even he including one and zero. He can't. He can't beat anybody at all. That team has to be up. That team has to have a lead. And if they don't have a lead, they can play from the front. He can absolutely run an offense from the front. He's not a problem with that. That game's on the line. You're in the fourth quarter. You, This is a guy that you just live bet against all day long in the fourth quarter. Yeah. You just, you just don't, don't, don't wager on any games whatsoever until they get to the fourth quarter. And then you just – if it's if they have the lead, don't bet against them. They're not giving it up. But – but if they if they're trailing and they're coming back, I assure you, he is going to dog this game away. He 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 just can't do it. Yeah, it it it's, is it's, it's really not any, it's yeah. mind boggling to see how much he folds under pressure. And I hate that because at, you and I are so high on the Vikings this year. Yeah, we thought that that uh, Kevin Stefanski and um, uh, Gary Kubiak could fix we, this offense. We and, talk about all the time, just some yeah. of these guys, you can't coach that out of them. I mean, they it's, were on like the 12, 13-yard line. They would have first won this and game. 10. Hang on. It was, it was first and 10, and all he has to do is throw the ball away, and instead he's going to try to make an impossible throw that nobody in the league can make running backwards the way he was in triple coverage, and lo and behold, the guy comes out with the ball. It's first and 10 from the goal line almost. What are you yeah. doing? Just throw the damn thing away. You got a couple more chances. Yeah, it it made no sense to me. And Dalvin Cook still incredibly impressive, but yeah. that's what they got to lean on. And they they got to find a way to teach this guy to quit making these awful decisions. And like you said, sometimes you just can't coach it out of them. But yeah. man, he is he folds under pressure like like maybe nobody I've ever seen. It's he's got just he's got just enough talent to keep you in all these games and give you hope though. That's yeah. the worst. Oh, and I mean, he'll put up massive worst. numbers when he you know when you got one of those type of games. But yeah. the way that they coached him in that first game, where they ran Dalvin Cook all over the Falcons, and, well, they couldn't and do up. that against the Packers. And we'll get yeah. on to number six. Packers are two and zero, and their two divisional wins. Man, that's a that's a big lead to start the season off. Oh yeah, that's a big deal. So yeah, it certainly is a road win at the Bears, and then you you beat the Vikings at home. I mean, that's I assume this offense has to get better, but they they don't look good. That defense is carrying them right now. You know who they look like? They look like the Bears of last year. That's who they look like. Which, which is crazy because this a team defense that should a not team be... that the offense just can't get going, but yeah. this defense is good enough to carry you. Which how how funny is that that Matt Lafleur comes in supposed to be the offensive guru that's supposed to fix this offense. And they are leaning heavily, heavily on that defense. But but that's the problem is you brought somebody in that's never had a history of fixing anybody's offense. And yeah. we just work under the assumption that – Because well, he, he was buddies he with to, Sean McVay. He'd he know used what to was coach up. in this McVay system. He's got to know what he's doing, right? Yeah. Like, I, just don't, I just don't think that's right. And then and then I know I crap on Rodgers all the time, but like, like his numbers the last couple of years have been awful. They're just all – I mean, he's, he's – He's good enough to win these games and not choke them away like Kirk Cousins, but but I mean they scored three touchdowns in like the first seven minutes of this game, and they, they didn't, didn't score, score for again the, the rest of the, of the game. game. Yeah, I mean it. Now that was against the Vikings defense. It's pretty good. Last week was against the Bears defense. Pretty good. Hey, but still. that Bears defense, that, the Broncos, shitty Joe Flacco, and the Broncos scored more than the than than the uh, than the than the Packers. Than the Packers did against yep. against that Bears defense. Okay? Yeah, they did. So, so there's something wrong there. All right. I I do agree with you. I do agree with you. All, all right. right. We are moving on. We'll, we'll move on number seven. Okay. All right. So so we'll get off bad quarterbacks. I'll change the topic. <laughs> Maybe some the bottom. Titans. The Titans set the field on fire. <laughs> no, 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 I know what you're thinking. See, damn, damn. <laughs> Their offense sucked. Okay. No, don't get me wrong. Their offense sucked. They literally set the field. On fire. Yes, they did. This was the most massive fire I've ever seen in my life. 
in a football field. Like, this is insane. Did you watch this thing? Yeah, no, I, I saw this. I, I watched that poor bastard live. trying to put this fire out with a fire extinguisher. I was just like, <laughs> yeah, that ain't working. That That is not working. Well, it's a, they, they talked about uh, uh, on Twitter, right? It was all over Twitter. Like, this is the state of Tennessee football right now between the volunteers who had the, the boat catch on fire from the Vol Navy and yep. it sank in, before the first game. And then you've got the field catching on fire before bad, the Titans. Bad omens, over. man. Bad omens. I, I'll say this about the Titans. Um, this was this was a lot of fun to watch. Like not as a Titans fan, obviously, but just as a football fan, it was super entertaining. And I, I don't think you can take anything away from this game for the Titans. They look like a completely different team every time they play the Colts. There's something about that uniform for Indianapolis that completely changes the Titans' makeup. They just they they don't look good against the Colts. They never have. They probably never will. What are they? Three and nineteen in their last twenty two. Listen, listen I, no, that was not listen. Okay, you're you're making this about one team, and it just happens to be the three takeaways from this game that we can have that that nobody's going to argue with. One, the Titans are exactly who I thought they were. They're an eight and eight team. They won last week and they beat the hell out of the the, the my Browns, and and then they're going to come home. That means they're going to lay an egg. All right. Now because they played so poorly this week. That is that is a I don't know who they play last next week. I haven't looked at the lines. Haven't Jaguars looked at the schedule on Thursday. Yet. I know this. I, I'll probably be leaning towards the Titans just just because this is the team that they are. They play great. They don't have a good week of practice. They play poorly. They have a great week of practice. They play great and they finish eight and eight. All right. Second thing, the Colts have built this team around the trenches, and that's how you set yourself up for long term success. That, yeah. that is just it. It doesn't matter if Jacoby Brissett was quarterback. It doesn't matter if they get a quarterback next year in the draft. Whoever that person is, whoever their quarterback is going forward, they are going to be fine. All right? It's not an Andrew Luck situation where they're going to throw a young quarterback in here and they're going to get killed. Okay? They're going to – this isn't David Carr back in Houston all those years ago either. That They have built this thing to where they can compete – and be competitive and be there at the end of games in every game against almost any opponent. Yeah. That's really smart. The third thing I took away from this game and this week overall, the AFC South is going to be crazy to watch this year. This is the most intriguing division of the season. Yeah, I think I agree with that. I I think because we have no idea what the Texans are going to be like. Gardner Minshew playing for the Jaguars – we know they've got a pretty good defense. We'll see what happens with Jalen Ramsey, whether he wants to be traded or not. But um, along with the Colts and the Titans, everybody is good enough to beat everybody else. Yep. Nobody is a complete just crap team. Uh, and you've got some chances for some really big surprises. Yep. So I, I, I'm curious. I, I mean, everybody could finish 8-8. Eight and eight. Uh, But somebody I think is going to, you know, the cream always rises to the top. We'll we'll see what happens with it. I'm I'm intrigued. All right, so we'll move on. Since the start of preseason, the following quarterbacks are either done for the season or will miss large parts of the game uh, of the year after week two. Here's the list: Andrew Luck retired, right. Ben Roethlisberger out for the season, Drew Brees out six to eight weeks, Sam Darnold out three to five weeks. We really well, don't know. Seven is what they said. Okay, so he, he could miss Simeon. two months. Trevor Simeon, Sam Darnold's backup. Out for the season. Yep. Nick Foles, out six to eight weeks, I'm guessing, with a collarbone. Yeah. But All no, right. no, Nick Foles is done for the year. He had to have surgery. Oh, they had surgery? The collarbone yeah. takes that long to heal? Yeah. yeah. So right. the clavicle, absolutely. Yeah, they said he's done for the year. All right. Romo used to break that thing and come back in like four weeks and then break it again. Well, I think and come it, it depends weeks. on if it's like a hairline fracture or whatever, right? But, but Foles, they said he's done. All right. Well, like that's it. They put him on injured reserve, and he's they they signed or they traded for Josh Dobbs from yeah, the Steelers. No. Who, by the way, looking at that deal now, don't you think the Steelers were like morons? <laughs> like, why morons. did we trade this guy away? Yeah, the the Mike Lombardi always says on his podcast and and all the things that he writes about, he says all the time, if the quarterback is the most important position on the field, the backup quarterback has to be the second most important position on the field. Yes. It 100%. just, it just, ha- if you want to compete every week, then it has to be. So, because it's the only position where you don't get depth at and, and, and practice reps. 
other backup offensive linemen come in during practice every week, rotate in games. On every position on defense, you rotate in the games. Every skill position, you rotate in on the games. It's the only position you don't. So, all right, all that. And we're just two weeks into the season. It's just week two. Yeah. You, you know who isn't missing any time? You, you know who's always there for you come Sunday, come Monday? You know, you know who's always just going to be there, and he's playing better than he's ever played before after 20 years in the league, my Lord and Savior, Thomas Edward Patrick Brady Jr. I didn't realize he had, like, four first names. Hey, man. What, what is that all, about? He's got all the names. You can call him whatever you want. <laughs> Listen, he's going he's gonna to take a few more here in a minute. Good gracious. Just, that's, just that's a ridiculous. joy to watch this man. I, I watched Sunday, and yes, they beat up on the on the Dolphins. On the and lowly Dolphins. Issues, and they've got these issues going on with the – next next week, next week, Luke Foles. Foles? Fox? Falk. Falk? Luke Falk. Luke Falk. Yeah, your, your is, boy from Washington State. Yeah, is going gonna, is gonna to team up with the Jets, and he's going to go up against Tom Brady. Both of them have something in common. They were both picked 199 in the draft. Yeah. That's that's where the similarities end, by the way. That's that's well, about it. Yeah. Tom, Tom has a few more touchdown passes. All right, you brought um, up Tom Brady. You know who else is playing insanely well right now? Patrick Mahomes. This this looks like a We're gonna get board. there. We're gonna get there. Is he? Oh, do you have that you on step, the list? You're stepping on my you stepping on my, my, my points here, man. Man, whatever. You're gonna, whatever. We're gonna get there. All right, we're go ahead. All let's, right. Let's do it. Just all these injuries and the and the forty two year old guy that's been playing for twenty years still getting it. Man, maybe yeah. there's something to this TB twelve thing. That you might be right, right about that. They don't sponsor the show, but they probably should. Yeah. Anyway, all right. Spent the majority of the show talking about QBs. This is a very QB centric show. Well, that's what the NFL and, is now. And and most of them suck right now. Yep. So we're gonna give you the ones that don't suck. Let me introduce you to Dak Prescott, Lamar Jackson. Patrick Mahomes, and my guy, Hustle and Bustle Russell. He's back. <laughs> Russell Wilson, man. Yeah. 29 of 35, 300 yards passing, three TDs. Come on. It's been a while since we've had a Russell Wilson weekend where he just said, you know what, I'm going to throw this team on my back. I'm going to do some things that are crazy. Screw this offense. I, I'm just going to be the best player on the field. And it was fun to watch. It was great. Yeah. No, I, right. I, I agree with you. Talk about uh, Mahomes. Talk about Mahomes because Patrick is one of them. He's he's still really good. This dude, yeah. this dude could do. All right, I told you to talk about him. I'm gonna say one thing. Go ahead, and I'll let you go. Everyone talked about how much he could regress and still be the best quarterback in football. There is a there is a chance that he might not regress at all. That he might get better. Can he throw sixty touchdowns this year? Uh, I'm not gonna go that far. If he was going to get to sixty, he needed to uh, he needed to put up points in the second half against the Raiders, <laughs> and he didn't do that. I will say this: Mahomes looks great. Obviously, it doesn't matter who is on the team as long as he has a wide receiver, he will be able to hit him for some big plays, right? Yep. Like it was Robinson this week, uh, last week it was Sammy Watkins. Does not matter. Tyreek Hill fast. is out. It, none yeah. of it matters, right? He he will find guys, and that's totally fine. But last year, he was number one in success rate in the red zone. And this year, that has dropped off. He is like 38% success rate in the red zone, which is 27th in the league through two games. Okay. Not good. Right. But, well, he had, but when he you're had, hitting explosive plays and you don't get that many opportunities in the red zone. He had three TDs last week. He had four this week, 30 for 44 for 443 yards and four touchdowns. Yeah. Let me introduce you to those numbers, okay? So <laughs> let's talk about how bad he is in the red zone again. The four, 443 and four TDs. No, you're right. Jesus, how bad can he be? I, Lamar Jackson, 24 of 36, 272 yards, two more touchdowns. This week broke out the wheels. Rush 16 times for 120 yards. Dak Prescott, 26 of 30, 269 yards, three TDs for him. I mean, these guys, football is now becoming, with these injuries, we are about, we're getting a massive separation between the good teams and the bad teams. This chasm is growing wider and wider and wider. Yeah. No, you're right. You're 100% right. So, I mean, it's, um, 
it, it the, when you've got a good quarterback in this league, you can win big, big, big time, right? And when you don't, there is it doesn't seem like there's any kind of in between anymore. See, I don't know, man. I mean, we I, we've seen teams with. I mean, last year Mitchell Trubisky with that Bears defense, they were able to put up just enough and still win. You know, ten plus games. I, I think you can. Yeah. I, you have to be better than Mitchell, though. Like you've got to be serviceable. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, I agree with you. I agree. I mean, right. I I just I don't know. You definitely you got to be better than serviceable, but it, if you don't got it, and your offense can't score, I mean, you better have one hell of a defense, and there aren't a ton of teams that have that, right? So True. it's there's a very fine line between the haves and the have nots, and it's well, it, it's mind boggling to watch because you can tell who's got it, or you can right. tell who's got the right coaching. How's that? Maybe maybe that's it. I don't know. So we'll we'll end it top five, bottom five, and and this is a quarterback league, and this is a 100%. quarterback top five, bottom five, baby. I'll give you my top five: Patriots, Ravens, Chiefs, Cowboys, Rams. Rams took over the uh, the fifth spot. My fifth spot, I've got the Cowboys. Like I, I I think they're good. I think they're really good. I don't. I want to see it against better competition. Like the Packers, they've started off the year with two divisional wins. Yeah, but I don't think the – like, we know what the Redskins are, and, I mean, the I Giants, agree. it looks like they're making the, the swap from Eli to Daniel Jones already. Yep. So, I I don't think that either one of those teams is very good. Um, I mean, the Redskins have been serviceable, but I still, you know, whatever, right? I, I want to see them do it against somebody uh, that I respect. How's that? I, I just don't – you keep saying that. I don't know who that is. So, <laughs> all right, bottom five. Here we go. All right, Dolphins, Giants, Steelers, Panthers, Jets. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think, yeah. And so, it, here's, much different. Here, all right. So, I I didn't realize you were giving out the the full top top five. I got the Pats, Chiefs, Rams, Ravens, and Cowboys. For my bottom five, I got Dolphins at thirty two. I got Giants. Panthers, Steelers, and then I got Jets right before okay. the Steelers. So you 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 just have the Jet, the Steelers and the and the Panthers flopped for me, flip flopped. I think so. Yeah, yeah. So we're pretty and we're it, pretty close on all these. This, There's a like, definite haves and have nots, and and look at the quarterbacks at all these positions 100%. and all these teams. Now I I wanted to put it, had there not been injuries, the Broncos would have been in there, right? Like I think the Broncos have some major problems right now. They're not close to as bad as these teams. But that's that's the where... Bengals. The Bengals would have been had the Jets shown up on Monday night. The Cincinnati would have been the team that I would have put in before the Broncos. The Broncos still have a really good defense. These teams that I have on this list, I don't think they're good at anything, and the Broncos are still going to have a top five, top ten defense. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, and to I make would, the comeback that they made in that game, I you know, that's the difference between the Broncos and these. Now they're not a whole lot above these guys, all right. Believe me, but I'm I'm curious about the Bengals, right? I mean, it, because we we talk about them not being very good, and we we don't like the new coach, or at least we we don't know about the new coach. But you know, we do like the Seahawks, and. They showed up in Seattle and gave the Seahawks all they wanted. Now they turned around this week and the 49ers just demolished them in Cincy, right? You, you just can't you can't look at the NFL like college. You have to. You, it's not. It's a week to week game. It yeah, is agreed. Agreed. And you that's can, what a I'm team, trying to team figure out. has a bad week and then literally can come back the next week and and be one of the best teams in the league and and vice versa. The Titans. The Titans look like the best football team on Sunday when when they went out last Sunday against the Browns on the road against a hyped up team and beat the hell out of them. Yeah. Then they come home and they fall all to pieces against a backup quarterback. Now, and their right. offense looks like crap against yeah. a defense that we think is good, but not great. So it's just the week, the week league The the Seahawks played the worst game they could possibly play. The Bengals played the best game they could possibly play. And they almost got got, and they got out of it with a win. 
Yeah. Yeah, Gave them a good week of practice. They got to go to to, to Pittsburgh. And and before Ben went down and his arm was jacked up, he was not looking great. No, he definitely wasn't. Mason Rudolph played just as good as Ben Roethlisberger played the first two weeks. I agree with that. 100%. 100%. It's going to be a weird season with all these injuries. Yes, it is. It's uh, The the viewership numbers were up ever so slightly last year. I got a feeling they're going to drop back down again. It's This isn't good mm-hmm. football right now. And it, it, it for years, it hasn't been for the week, first few weeks of the season, yeah, right? Week, week one through four is always bad because – no one works in preseason, and and the, they don't really get to practice enough. So it's just the way the game is and the collective bargaining agreement's gone. If I was these owners and I was these coaches, I would find a way to come up with a bigger percentage of money and pay these guys more money, but they have to agree to practice. They, they just have to. you got to put on – I know it's not safe. I know more guys will get hurt. you got to go to – the union's got to ask for more roster spots for more jobs. OK, and the owners have to be willing to pay more players, have bigger rosters and and they have to be able to practice more. They I do wonder have. if if maybe there wouldn't be as many injuries if they got more practice. Right. Like if, if your body is more uh, accustomed to the rigors of this, then maybe it's I, not so, I you know, know, some like, of these things you're not predicting. I mean, some of these yeah, things I mean, are you, nothing you, you, you do nothing you about Miles it, Garrett just falling on you and snapping your ankle. I mean, there's just nothing you can do. Yeah, about I that. mean, obviously, you're you going to have that kind of stuff happen. Whatever, I, whatever Ben did when he threw his arm, there's no, I, no one knows. I mean, no one touched him. He just no, it, popped his elbow. Apparently, Same this was something breeze. that's been going on. Like, and uh, uh, Pro Football Doc talks about this. Uh, it looked like this was something that had been going on for several weeks, and they were just trying to get Ben to play through it, which he thinks there'll be an investigation by the NFL regarding the injury report. Because it was never brought up, it was never discussed, it was never. But when it happened, everybody was just nonchalant, like, "All right, yep, there it went." And he, he said it was it's similar to Tommy John surgery, but not exactly the same thing. So, like, he could come back and be great. Um, but apparently, it looked like something that's been they've been talking about it for a while, like just behind closed doors, which could be. I mean, that could be massive, right? No, I mean, who knows. That, if they're doing that, then that's a problem. But that that sounds like something that Aaron Rodgers would say when he plays like crap for a couple of weeks. Yeah. I was playing hurt the whole time. And well, it finally I mean, the, popped. the Steelers have not said that, oh, he he was playing hurt. He was just playing through it. Uh, just their reaction to everything like has has looked about like this. And if you watched how he was playing against the, the Patriots, uh, it I mean, he looked off. We just thought he was done, right? But if it's if it's an injury, uh, maybe there's something to that. So, no, I think it had something to do with, you know, possibly an injury and the fact that the Patriots are freaking ridiculously good on defense. Hey, like, is there a world in which they don't give up a touchdown for the first month of football? A hundred percent. Because they have the Jets next week, and then who do they have after that? It's not a good football team. No, Week four, they play the Bills at Buffalo. Buffalo will score on them. Buffalo will score. I Buffalo mean, it could be a defensive them. touchdown, but, you know. No, Buffalo, Buffalo will score an offensive touchdown. They're good. Yeah. Buffalo's a good team. They're 2-0, oh, baby. Oh, Best yeah. team in the state of New York. Oh, and their defense looks unbelievable. God, I was so right on them. I've been I've been wrong on the Broncos. I was I was big wrong on them. I, I'm, I'm so right on Buffalo Bills. Oh, yeah. And, and they got the Bengals coming into town this week. Yeah, they're going to make the playoffs. I've got so much invested in their over and them making the playoffs this year. Really good payouts on that. I'm so happy. So Absolutely. Happy. Absolutely. All right, you all ready right, to get out of here? That's it. Let's go. All right, all right. So that is Winning Cures Everything. Again, you can find us on social media. Go over to winningcureseverything.com. Uh, we're on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, whatever your favorite podcast app is. If you're listening to the podcast, leave us a nice review. We would appreciate that very much so. We, uh, we thank you guys for supporting the show. We will see you all again with our gambling picks and our previews and everything else for the rest of the week tomorrow. 
Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.